Welcome back. Over the past seven episodes, we've explored the themes, underlying meaning, and ideas found in the silent film classic, The Golem, how he came into the world, reimagined with an entirely new musical score. In the dramatic conclusion, Wegner completes the circle of ideas he began with Rabbi Lowe in the opening moments of the story. For our final soundtrack, we brought back together the team that recently produced the new score for Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments. This trio consists of Los Lobos' Steve Berlin, Stephen Drozd of the Flaming Lips, and jazz drumming legend Scott Amendola. And now, sit back and enjoy the finale.
it's powerful. Mm -hmm. it, it's powerful to see this moment in the story, to see uh, these images come across. It, it's interesting to me how some stories that originated so long ago, they feel so real to us today. Mm -hmm. And in this particular segment that we saw in this episode, um, I, I feel the emotion in the story of what Wagner is trying to convey. Yeah, I think it's, it's becoming more than the symbolism. We're feeling it yes. now, which yes. is why I am so excited to talk to our guest today. Our final guest comes to us from the world of film criticism. Ina Archer is a filmmaker, visual artist, programmer, and writer whose multimedia works and films have been shown nationally. She's a media conservation and digitization specialist at the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Ina, we are so delighted to have you with us today. Thank you for being open to coming uh, onto the program and talking about the Golem. Glad to be here. Glad to talk about the Golem. Um, long time <laughs> fan without actually having seen the film. So, I, so it was a good opportunity to reacquaint or, or to become acquainted. As you well know, uh, Ina, the, the Golem is one of a number of uh, silent films and even more specifically German silent films that come out of this era uh, that we, we've never quite been able to turn loose of as a society and as a culture. And we seem to be returning, you know, to these stories time and time again. Um, what is it in particular about silent films that, you know, we, we've developed the technology to have talkies and, you know, we, we've went far beyond the technology they used, but we still keep coming back to films from the silent era. What is it about these stories that, uh, that seems to keep pulling us back? Um, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is the um, is the pictorial part of them, the uh, the way they're made, the um, the amount of uh, evocativeness that's in them when you give them the time to uh, unfold in front of you. Um, I think that they um, so just you know in terms of beauty or dynamic filmmaking, um, also a kind of filmmaking that's not dependent on, um, on verbal uh, exchanges. Um, I think that that's always going to, to um, be intriguing to us. And uh, I think because they're, they're different, they feel different. Um, they're, you know, they're much more experimental than I think we give them credit for just, you know, when, when glossing over thinking about old silent films. Um, so I, I guess that that's part of it. And, you know, as you know, silent films weren't ever really silent. So there's, you know, there would have been some kind of score or soundtrack or narration or some other kinds of um, uh, engagement in the room that would, would, uh, add to the um, the exchange with the audience with with the, the piece that they're watching. Do you think I know that you are a fan of horror? Um, do you think the fact that the Golem was a horror film and not in the way that I think of in terms of like gore and stuff, but like a true horror film? Do you think that was a big part of why people are drawn to it? Definitely, I think that's you know how it gets on uh, people's radar um, as a early horror film. Um, I certainly think that that's, um, you know, adds to my interest in it, um, or, and it's a different way of, uh, a different context for it. Um, so I think that that's definitely keeping the film fresh. Um, and, um, and the horror genre kind of allows so many different, uh, kinds of, um, interpretations, uh, you know, ways to move into storytelling that you might not necessarily uh, encounter. So, uh, yeah, I think the horror part of it is, um, you know, a great way to help us visit, you know, film histories that are going on, you know, all over the world, actually. It kind of unites uh, the genre, kind of pulls together uh, different nations, different kinds of interests. And, uh, you know, lack of gore, but it could be 
pre-violent sometimes, just the same, but... My imagination can imagine the violence. <laughs> Ida, as you watch the Golem, uh, as you watched the Golem recently, um, what were some of the things that struck you about this story? What, how did it speak to you? Well, one of the things, I actually had uh, gone to see um, Candyman just uh, a few days before, and I was thinking a lot about, um, you know, the original Candyman, of course. <laughs> and, uh, but um, watching the Golem, I really uh, was ended up having a lot of thoughts about Candyman and how and some of the the um, the parallels that um, happen um, in between the films. Um, I'd always been uh interested in the golem figure just because I think he kind of circulates um, outside of the film, you know, sort of generally that his, his iconic, uh, you know, Dutch boy, Bob and um, his, uh, you know, and his kind of amazing expressive face. Um, so it was, you know, having known of the golem as an image to see the, the narrative around it, was uh, really um, was uh, really enjoyable, um, and that it's you know, and that, that it so resonates with the Frankenstein uh, myth um, and Frankenstein movies. But I also really had these thoughts about the um, about the myth side of the uh, the Golem story and the you know created myth that is present in Candyman and how the Candyman myth in the original film, I think it's, it's a little bit different um, in the, the newer film, uh, the new film. The, the idea that this, um, this urban legend uh, that animates a particular location and space is something that is needed both to um, help the community understand difficulties, but then is also, uh, in some ways, attacking the community, you know, or, or um, uh, not attacking, but but sort of trying to burst out of that that same space. When you said that, I've never put two and two together about how many horror films are based around myths and urban legends. I just have never put those two together. I mean, I personally myself will never say Candyman five times. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and how those those myths kind of stick with us. I, I had never really thought about it from that point of view. Thank you for saying that. And evoking, you know, evoking this this uh, creature, you know, so saying it five times or that he has the, uh, that the golem has a word that, you know, brings him to life. Uh, and that he has to be kind of called out to, you know, at your peril, perhaps. So, um, and just the, you know, why that, why that story kind of persists. Do you see anything in this story of the golem uh, uh, that could speak to our future, uh, to, to where uh, the story of the golem uh, could go from here? I guess I overall tend to feel that strong movies are always a, a great um, indicator that a future is, is possible. Um, and I like that the film has uh, what appears to be a positive ending uh, and that um, and that opening up, I think, is is uh, definitely lends a, an idea that there's a, a future, um, you know, or that there's possibilities. So yes, yes, um, I think the, the the golem, you know, sort of with flowers all over him, and then being taken back into his into uh, his home, you know, has a uh, has a a positive side to it. <laughs> Ina, thank you so much for joining us and uh, giving us these amazing insights into the golem. 
<laughs> Thank you for having me. I really, I really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you for joining us for Reboot Rescored Presents The Golem. This series would not have been possible without the generous support of the Jim Joseph Foundation, the Righteous Persons Foundation, the Schusterman Family Foundation, the William Davidson Foundation, the Joyce and Irving Goldman Foundation, and viewers like you. To learn more about this film and the work of Reboot, visit Rebooting.com. Shalom, Shalom. And, and see you, you at, at the, the movies. movies.